So Tulsi Gabbard was interviewed by Dana Bash on CNN. For some reason, Dana's the only one doing Republican interviews lately. And she speaks on the made-up controversy of the Arlington Cemetery. But the question is, why would CNN have Tulsi Gabbard on if they're trying to elect Kamala Harris? They know she's a good speaker. They know she's the sole reason as to why Kamala Harris dropped out of the 2020 election when she destroyed Kamala on stage. It's almost like they're trying to get more credibility as journalists. Or maybe accepting the fact that Donald Trump will win in November because of how atrocious the CNN interview was. I'm going to choose the credibility one because I think Dana is trying to gain her respect back or what little she had because a highly edited interview of a presidential candidate makes you and your network look terrible. But anyways, let's take a listen. And it is a remarkable situation in that you are uh, a uh, Democrat who debated her in a Democratic primary and now you are helping the Republican uh, nominee to debate her. A and on that I remember in 2020, you attacked Harris for being too aggressive as a prosecutor, which is the opposite from what Donald Trump is saying about her as weak on crime. So which is it? What I pointed out in that debate stage in the 2020 campaign was her hypocrisy. It was how she was saying one thing and doing another, how she was prosecuting people for, for smoking marijuana and laughing about it when she was asked about it. Uh, on a radio show. And I think this goes to the heart of many of these different issues that we're seeing now that Kamala Harris is, is trying to hide from voters is how she says her position is one thing, but her actions and her record show exactly the opposite. And you can point to that on issues related uh, to the economy, issues related to freedom of speech. She says she stands for freedom of speech. And yet, as we've seen time and time again, her and Joe Biden have taken actions both directly and indirectly to censor free speech. Uh, most recently, I can point to my own experience of this, of how the Harris-Biden administration have added me to a secret domestic terror watch list the very day after uh, Kamala Harris was endorsed by Joe Biden. And I was on TV and warning the American people about what I saw as the dangers of a Kamala Harris presidency taking action that was clearly political retaliation. They've done this yep. to a lot of different people, which points to how dangerous it is to have people in power so willing to abuse that power to go after political opponents. Okay. I, uh, I'm not familiar with the secret terror watch list. We're definitely going to follow up on that, uh, but I do want to move on. This was actually something that'd be nearly front headlines, so it was obviously strategic for CNN not to cover an actual news story, but it was almost unavoidable to miss the story. But basically, Tulsi Gabbard was put on the terror watch list the day after she went on Fox News and criticized the Biden administration. She has to endure excessive hours of long security screenings at airports and have multiple federal air marshals on their flight. And quote, this is the real pain and stress that's been caused both to me and my family by this whole situation. Day and night, wondering if and what government institution and agency is monitoring my phone calls, surveilling me in my movement and my travels, knowing that they may be looking for some kind of excuse or derogatory action to come after me. How is this not a political attack? She's a lieutenant colonel in the army and a former Hawaii congresswoman, and she deserves to be on a terror watch list? This is disgusting. To what is happening with regard to controversy after the former president visited Ar Arlington National Cemetery this week. His campaign took photos and video uh, of him in Section 60, where veterans uh, of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan are buried, used it in a campaign video. The Army also says that Trump staffers abruptly pushed aside a cemetery official who tried to enforce Arlington's rules prohibiting political activities. I know you were uh, with Trump at least earlier in that day uh, at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Did you witness the altercation at Section 60? 60? Uh, I was there from the, the beginning with the laying of the wreaths with the family members, the Gold Star family members and, and some of the survivors of that terrorist attack. Uh, in that disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. I was with them at Section 60, and what I saw was a very grave and somber remembrance and honoring of those lives that were lost. And I saw President Trump spending time at the invitation of these Gold Star families with them. Uh, he was there for a few hours. I did not see or hear about any kind of altercation until something came out in the news uh, later on. The families were there. Uh, grieving alongside uh, President Trump. And, and it was a very special moment to 
really remember their names, remember their memories, and understand the true cost of war and, and the consequences of the decisions that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden made in the execution of that withdrawal. Yeah, and it is very clear that the uh, former president was invited in his personal capacity, as you said, by uh, a, a family of uh, one of the service members who was killed uh, about a, about two years ago during the withdrawal from Afghanistan. It the was question, three years ago. Three years ago. Three years Thank ago you. to Thank the you day on me. August 26th. Yes, three years ago. The only controversy surrounding Arlington is the controversy of Biden and Harris not honoring the soldiers they got killed. But of course the media has to make everything political and negative about whatever Trump does. I think they're just jealous that he was the one invited. And he is the president respected by Gold Star families because they know in their heart, if Trump was elected during this moment, none of the service members would have died. It's really sad to think about, actually. The question is about the federal law and Arlington's rules that prohibit partisan or political activities at national cemeteries. And um, the military uh, and also other members of other families who are buried right near there are upset about the campaign filming it and posting the video online. Do you believe that was appropriate? You know, I checked with the campaign on this question and uh, they have exchanges with the, the officials at Arlington Cemetery. They were approved to bring a camera there to document this historic and momentous day that should not be forgotten by any American. And to have a former president there and joining these Gold Star families, I know President Trump wanted to share that with others, especially given the fact that President Biden Harris, I heard, were, were invited by some of these family members. They not only didn't come, they didn't even respond to that invitation. And, and now to have Kamala Harris put this statement out yesterday saying that she stands with these families, she stands with the military and with veterans, you only have to look at the response that came from the Gold Star families of these 13 service members of how offended they were by that statement, given she has not made any effort, not on that third anniversary or any other time, to call them directly to offer her condolences and even apologies for their decisions that led to the loss of their loved one. Instead of making up triggered staff members, how about we ask the opinion of the Gold Star families because if they felt disrespected, then absolutely Trump should apologize. But none of that happened because it was obvious that it was encouraged. They would make controversy out of him breathing. Do you think that the campaign will release that uh, communication that you're talking about because the army uh, is I saying very, they clearly, had, very but... clearly that that was that they broke the rules uh, because it was clearly put out online pictures video uh, meant as a part of his campaign. I, I thought they already had. I was informed that uh, they had come to an agreement. They could bring a camera there. And as far as I know, and the public statements I've seen from the army is that the matter is closed. I think the matter is closed about the altercation. Oh my God, shut up. Why couldn't Dana have been like this in the Kamala interview? Literally nobody cares about this story. Alleged altercation, which you didn't see, but I'm not sure it's closed with the idea that uh, they seem to have broken the rules and perhaps even federal law by putting out the campaign video. I, I want to ask you about... Here, here's, I just like to say one, one last thing on this because I think it's important and I've seen a lot of the, the headlines and the stories and the concerns that people are raising about this. But but to me, as, as a soldier and as someone who has been deployed to different war mm -hmm. zones in the world, and I have friends who are buried there at Section 60, what is more outrageous to me is that there wasn't universal coverage of the momentous day of the third anniversary of the loss of these 13 Gold Star families and the outrage that they feel that, they, that their loved ones are not getting the kind of coverage and memory that their great sacrifice deserves. That, that is what everyone should be outraged about. Well, yeah, we have covered the uh, horrible, horrible events uh, three years ago and, uh, and have done so several times uh, over and over again. So I appreciate you also talking about their memories because it is important. Thank you, Tulsi. Yep, that backed her up into a corner. I want to hear outrage on why these service members had to die for our country. Why we left billions of dollars of equipment. Why we pulled out in a way that wasn't safe for our soldiers. Why we left Americans there. Why there was no accountability. But no, let's talk about broken video recording rules, even though we have no evidence of that. 
Before you go, uh, you said in an interview this week that you were interested in serving in a Trump administration, potentially as Secretary of State, maybe Secretary of Defense. Have you discussed that with Donald Trump directly? No, I haven't. You know, it's important for us right now to point out the difference between Kamala Harris and President Donald Trump, uh, what kind of president and commander in chief they would be. And really the leading um, concern that I have is about this, about the contrast between their positions and their records and the fact that as we sit here today, President Biden and Kamala Harris have us embroiled in wars in three different regions of the world, have us closer to the brink of World War III and nuclear war now than ever before, according to the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. And this should be of concern, not just to Republicans and Democrats, it should be a concern to all Americans because what's at question is our ability to have a future and to live in a free society where we can be peaceful and prosperous. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is personal for me as it be, should be personal for, for all Americans because it is our future that's on the line here in this decision that we as voters have to make about who we want our commander in chief to be.